Okay, so we're going to have a look at some generalizations of the Fibonacci numbers. So we've got a few different examples here with different recurrence relations which tell you how to get the next term in your sequence from the previous two terms. So for example, for our first one here, instead of adding the previous two terms in your sequence to generate the next one, you multiply them. So if you imagine your sequence starts off with a and b as your first two terms, then the next term is just going to be the product of these a times b, then to get the next one you do b times ab, so you get a b squared. And your next one is going to be a times a, a squared, then you get b to the power of 3, b times b squared, then a times a squared gives you a cubed, b squared times b to the 3 gives you b to the 5, next up is a to the 5, b to the power of 8. And you might see a nice pattern emerging here, a to the 3 times a to the 5 gives you a to the 8, and you've got a power of 13 for your b, and so on. So you'll see here that the powers of a and b are actually just your Fibonacci numbers. So it's quite a nice way of expressing this sequence in terms of the Fibonacci sequence. So we say that f1 is equal to 1 for our Fibonacci numbers, f2 is also 1, f3 this is 2, f4 is 3, f5 is 5, and so on. So these are our Fibonacci numbers. We can express the nth term of this first sequence in terms of the Fibonacci numbers. So un, we can write this as a to the power of, it's not quite fn, the nth Fibonacci number, it's going to be fn minus 2. And instead of having b to the power of fn, it's b to the power of fn minus 1, because b is always the next Fibonacci number as its power compared to the power that a has. So this is valid. un is a to the power of fn minus 2 times b to the power of fn minus 1 for n greater than or equal to 3. And you could also say this works for n equals 2 using the convention that f0 is 0. So we won't actually prove this. You could now, now that we've established what the pattern is, you could set up for a proof by induction. That's quite straightforward from here. We'll just go through these first two examples quite quickly. And we're going to deal with the third one in more detail. So we've got a nice expression in terms of the Fibonacci numbers for our first sequence. So what about this second sequence where instead of just adding the previous two terms in our sequence, we add the previous two terms, but then we also add a constant term each time. So what does this look like? You start off with a and b once again as your first two terms in your sequence. And the next term is a plus b, but then we also have to add in c. So then next we do b plus a plus b plus c, so you get a plus 2b plus c. And then each time we're adding another c, so we actually get a plus 2b plus 2c as our next term. Okay, so what do we get next? We do a plus b plus c plus a plus 2b plus c. This gives us 2a plus 3b plus 3c. Then we add another c, so you actually get plus 4c. So it's not quite clear what's going on. Let's generate a few more terms to try and work out what the pattern is. So a plus 2b plus 2c, add this to our 2a plus 3b plus 4c. We'll get 3a plus 5b, then plus 6c plus another c gives you plus 7c. So it looks like our coefficients of a and b are just the Fibonacci numbers again. And you see when we add these two together, 5a plus 8b, this works. Then 4 plus 7 plus another one lot of c gives us plus 12c. And if we just keep going like this, you'll get 8a plus 13b plus, so 7 plus 12 gives you 19c, and you have to add another c each time, so plus 20c. So what's going on with our coefficients of c here? Well, you can compare these to the Fibonacci numbers here, actually. So you think 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. These are all actually just Fibonacci numbers minus 1. So the pattern seems to be that your nth term here is similar to what we had before, so it'll be a times fn minus 2, the n minus 2 Fibonacci number, plus b times fn minus 1, because b is the next one along in the sequence, and then c is being multiplied by just fn, it's actually the same value of n, and we just need to take away 1 from that Fibonacci number to get our coefficient of c there. So once again, this is going to work for all n greater than or equal to 3. Now for our next sequence, instead of just adding the previous two terms plus a constant term, we're going to be adding the previous two terms plus a term whose value actually increases each time. So what does this actually look like? Well, if we start off with a and b again, so I'm just going to write them all one under the other, then to get the next term you do a plus b, then you've also got to add 1 here. So this is u3, so when n is 1, we're adding a 1 there. To get to our next one, we do b plus a plus b plus 1, so you get a plus 2b plus 1, but then we've also got to add 2 here, so for u4 we're adding 2. 
If we keep going here, you'll get 2a plus 3b. So it looks like our coefficients of a and b might just be the Fibonacci numbers again. It's not super clear what's going on with our 1s and 2s and 3s. So here, I'm not going to group together the 1s and 2s, just because I think this will help us understand a bit better the structure of what's going on with this number term that's being added at the end. So if we keep going just a little bit further, a plus 2a gives us 3a, 2b plus 3b gives us 5b, then we've got 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, and we've also got to add 4 from this plus n rule here. So if we keep going, we'll start grouping together our 1s, our 2s, collecting them all together, see how many we've got. So we'll get 5a plus 8b, and now we've got 5 lots of 1, and we've also got 3 lots of 2, we've got 2 lots of 3, we've just got 1, 4, and we also have to add 1 lot 5 just from this plus n rule here. So you may spot the pattern now, the coefficient of each of these numbers seem to be the Fibonacci numbers appearing in reverse order now. So this was u7, our seventh term in the sequence. We'll just try and write this a little bit more concisely now using some sigma notation. So we can write this as 5a plus 8b, and now we're going to write this as the sum from k equals 1 up to 5 of k, so k 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is getting multiplied by a Fibonacci number, but which Fibonacci number goes with k? Well k, when k is 1, we have the fifth Fibonacci number. So if we go with f5 plus 1 minus k, this will give us the fifth one when k is 1, it will give us the fourth one when k is 2, and so on, all the way down to getting the first Fibonacci number when k is 5. So how can we try and generalise this rule? Well, let's introduce a conjecture now that if u7 has this sort of structure, we'll say that un, perhaps we're going to have a multiplied by this is fn minus 2, so 5 is the fifth Fibonacci number when n is 7. We get 8, which is the sixth Fibonacci number when n is 7, so plus b times fn minus 1. Then we've also got this sum here. So what's this going to look like in general? Hopefully this is going to be the sum from k equals 1 up to n minus 2 of k multiplied by now. Instead of it being 5 plus 1 minus k, it'll be n minus 2 plus 1 minus k. So we'll just write it as n minus 1 minus k. So we'll say that this is hopefully our nth term, but before we try and prove this by induction, we'll see if we can tidy up this sum term a little bit more. Now to simplify this sum term, we'll just stick with our example where n was 7 to illustrate what's going on. So what does this sum actually look like when n is 7? We get 1 times f5 plus 2 times f4 plus 3f3 plus 4f2 plus 5 f1, where these are your Fibonacci numbers. And there's a really nice way of visualising what we're going to do next. So if we write this sum now, it's basically f5 plus two lots of f4. So I'm going to draw this in a triangular array like this. So you can see at the moment we're basically adding f5 plus two lots of f4 plus three lots of f3, and we add four lots of f2, and finally we add five lots of f1. So at the moment the sum is set up so that we're adding along the rows like this. We could also rearrange so that we're adding in the columns like this. You can see there's a nice way of expressing each of these different sums. So instead of writing it like this, we'll actually write it as f1 plus f1 plus f2 and so on plus f1 plus f2 plus f3. So what does this actually mean for our sigma notation? Well we can write now the sum from k equals 1 to n minus 2 of k f and minus 1 minus k. What we can actually write this as is just the sum from k equals 1 up to n minus 2. Imagine we start with this column and then add all of the others. This is now going to be the sum from j equals 1 up to k of the jth Fibonacci number fj. So you could do this more algebraically rather than pictorially where you replace this k here by this is equal to the sum from j equals 1 up to k of just 1, and then you change your order of summation there. This would also give you, equivalently, this change here. And then we've got a nice way of expressing this as the sum of sums of Fibonacci numbers. The next step then is going to be finding a nice way of expressing what is the partial sum of the first k Fibonacci numbers. Now there's a really nice way of deriving a neat formula for the sum of the first k Fibonacci numbers, and this just relies on using 
the recurrence relation fn plus 2 equals fn plus 1 plus fn. So your next term in the sequence is the sum of the previous two terms. But we can rearrange this to say that fn is going to be fn plus 2 minus fn plus 1. So actually one term is the term two terms along minus the next term, just rearranging using this. So why is this helpful? Well, if we write f1 now as f3 minus f2, we write f2 as f4 minus f3, we write f3 as f5 minus f4, and so on. We see that actually a lot of these f's are going to cancel with each other. So fk minus 1 we write as fk plus 1 minus fk, and finally fk is fk plus 2 minus fk plus 1. So you'll see here that pretty much all of our terms are going to cancel this fa plus fk plus 1 cancel with minus fk plus 1. This minus fk will cancel with the positive fk we've not included there. Your f5 cancel with the minus f5 in the next term. Your f4 and minus f4 cancel. Your f3 and minus f3 cancel. And all that we're actually left with is this minus f2 and this plus fk plus 2. We can write this entire sum then as just the k plus 2 Fibonacci number minus f2. And don't forget that f2, the second Fibonacci number, is just 1. So it's even easier just to write this as fk plus 2 and we take away 1 from that. So what are the implications then for our double sum here? We can write this as the sum from k equals 1 to n minus 2 then. Instead of writing this sum, we just write f k plus 2 minus 1, where the minus 1 is in the sum. So we can take this minus 1 out of the sum, we get the sum from k equals 1 up to n minus 2 of fk plus 2, and you're basically just taking away 1 n minus 2 times. So now we take away n minus 2, where this is no longer inside your sum. So for this term, what have we actually got here? It's a little bit confusing with the k plus 2, but we start off, this is f3 plus f4, and so on, all the way up to fn. So we can actually write all of this then as the sum from k equals 1 to n of fk, just rechanging the index here, but then we need to take away f1 and take away f2, so we're just taking away 1 and taking away another 1, so you've got minus 2 minus n minus 2, which isn't in your sum. So then we can use our formula once again. This is, instead of fk plus 2, it's now fn plus 2. So you get fn plus 2 minus 1. And we also have minus 2 minus n minus 2. So this gives you a minus n. We'll write this slightly more neat as fn plus 2 minus n plus 1. This tells us then that our conjectured form for the nth term of our sequence is going to be un is a fn minus 2 plus b fn minus 1 plus fn plus 2 then minus n plus 1. Now we'll just finish off with a quick proof by induction. So we're trying to show that this formula works basically for all n greater than or equal to 3. So remember when n is 1 and n is 2 you just have a and b your starting two values. The formula doesn't quite work there. So we'll try and show this works for all n greater than or equal to 3 using a proof by induction. So you actually need n equals 3 and n equals 4 as your base case to get us started. So we've already seen the first few terms in this sequence. You can quite easily check that when n is 3 and n is 4, this formula does indeed work for our base case. Then we'll proceed by a strong induction approach. So we actually assume now the formula works for all n from 3 up to some value k. Then we need to show that the formula will also work for k plus 1. So using our strong inductive hypothesis, you can write u k minus 1 now as a times f k minus 3 plus b f k minus 2 plus f k plus 1, then minus would be k minus 1 plus 1, so just minus k there. And again, using our inductive hypothesis, we can write u k as a f k minus 2 plus b f k minus 1 plus f k plus 2 minus k plus 1. So then to get u k plus 1, we need to add these two together. And also, because we've got k plus 1, you would need to add a k minus 1 there. So to get u k plus 1, add these two together. So you have a times f k minus 3 plus f k minus 2. You see we'll be able to use the Fibonacci recurrence relation in a sec. We've got b f k minus 2 plus f k minus 1. We've also got fk plus 1 plus fk plus 2. And you've got a minus k minus k plus 1, so it's minus 2k plus 1. But then we also need to, because it's uk plus 1, 
we add the previous two terms together, we also need to add a k minus 1. So plus k minus 1 there. So let's simplify all of this. fk minus 3 plus fk minus 2 just turns into fk minus 1. The sum of these two terms gives the next Fibonacci number. And similarly for our coefficient of b, we now get fk. And then fk plus 1 plus fk plus 2 gives us a fk plus 3. Then let's just tidy this up. Minus 2k plus 1 plus k minus 1. So we actually get now minus k plus 1, put this in brackets, plus 1. So you can see here this is indeed consistent. uk plus 1 is a fk minus 1 plus bfk plus fk plus 3 minus k plus 1 plus 1. This is indeed consistent then with our formula for the nth term of the sequence. So we can see then that this is indeed how we would express our sequence in terms of the Fibonacci numbers.